Hey friends, Mark Holmes here, and as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. All right, I've cried my cries. I've gotten mad. I've let it out in my system. This is a short week, so we don't have much time to grieve that loss. But let's be honest now. New England has more Super Bowls than anybody else for a reason. New England has not just beat us at home. New England has beat 20 other teams or 20 other games at home. And there's a reason for that. They're a good team with the GOAT for a quarterback, Bill Belichick. And they've got the best referees that money can buy. The reality is, is the chances of beating New England at home were not good. You had to have everything perfect to happen for you, and you needed a couple of breaks, none of which came your way. It's the reality of it. They are a better team that is better coached. And there's no shame of losing that game. Yes, it, it, it would have been nice to have won. Believe me, it would have been nice. It had been nice to be on there talking on my live stream there tonight about how the Dallas Cowboys went to New England in bad weather and outcoached Bill Belichick. But it was a pipe dream. The NFL, things can change in a heartbeat. And we got a couple of days and we have the opportunity to write the ship or create more questions. The Buffalo Bills have given up more 20 plus plays than anybody else in the NFL. If you cannot move the ball against them, then we got a real problem. I'm going to end up probably saying something that I probably shouldn't, but this is, is my thought. As I looked at that game, I keep wondering to myself one thing. That game was sloppy. It was ugly. It was wet. It was cold. First time that I've ever seen Dak wearing gloves. You know, he put the gloves on, you know, the end of the first half and stuff to help out because his hands were cold, they were wet, and the ball was slippery. The fact that we only had one you know, interception and no fumbles is actually a testament to at least protecting the football. I mean, Lord knows, you saw Carson Wentz fumble three times and throw a couple interceptions. But when you have a game like that, that's when the coach is supposed to look at game conditions. You can put all you want on paper and you can come up with a great plan but you sometimes have to just tear that shit up and say, we need a new one on the fly. You have to adjust on the battlefield to conditions that you did not anticipate. You've got to be able to move and flex. If you end up making your front right here and the enemy's coming this way trying to outflank you, guess what? You better swing your ass around or else you're going to be dead. And with that game being the way it was, it seems like when the Cowboys make a mistake one way, they swing the other way too far. I don't know if you noticed that. When we were playing against Minnesota, we were passing the ball. Boom, boom, passing the ball, effective. Like crazy. Four, Dak had 397 yards passing. And instead they said, wait a minute. We got to be balanced. We're not balanced. Let's run Zeke now. We got to get the stats even. Even though we weren't able to run all night. And we lost. So now... You go into the Lions game, and you pass the hell out of the ball. 
you know what? You said, hey, running game didn't work. Zeke Elliott's not the same guy. So we're going to pass the ball. That's where we're going to go. Dak is hot. We're going to ride that arm. And we rode it to a victory. And here it was. We came into this game. We're a passing team now. We're going to pass the ball. Even though you're pacing the best pass defense in the league in a freaking hurricane, can't see. Every time the receivers look up, they're getting rain in their eyes and, and they just, just can't see. And running's working. But you've already swung. We're a passing team now. And that's where you don't adjust. You have to be able to adjust to real-time things. And that's when you should have realized, okay, we can't pass the way we'd like to. We're not giving it up. But we got to understand that we're going to need to run the football because right now Zeke is eating. He's getting 4.4, 4.6 yards a carry. He was working. Tony Pollard was getting some things. But you continue now to swing too far to the other side and pass. What it should have been was, you know what? All hands on deck, we're going to run the football until we can't run it anymore. And we did. And this is the thing that I, I, I sit here and wonder right now if Jerry Jones is to blame for taking away one of our weapons. I'm sitting here during the live stream, and the Rams are getting killed. Six points right now. I, and, and I think it was 35 to 6 with Baltimore. You know, that seems like a team that's destined right now. Lamar Jackson. Last year was known as just a running quarterback. And they laughed and said, well, he's a really a running quarterback. That ain't going to work. And they let go of Joe Flacco. And right now, he's a better passing quarterback than Joe Flacco. And he's got running ability like Michael Vick. And because he can do both, it's kind of like when RG came out, that if he got outside, he could make that little dunk pass. He couldn't pass in the pocket. But you had to worry about him being able to run. And that's where Lamar Jackson is. But if you notice, it's almost like Dak Prescott right now will not run. It's like he's trying to prove to everybody that he is a pocket passer, that he is a passer, not a running quarterback. And I wonder also, too, the fact that we have not gotten a contract done. The fact that he has not been paid, that he's only making $2 million a year. And I know he's got an insurance policy, okay? I know he's got endorsements, but the reality is, is if Dak Prescott's career ends tomorrow, those endorsements are going to dry up. And you're talking about millions and millions and millions of dollars that are on the line every time he takes off. That if he gets hurt, he will never be able to get. And if the back of his mind, I know he's about winning, but in the back of your mind, you got to say, I got to protect the house. Because there were a couple times last night that you would think that if he wasn't thinking about that, that maybe he takes off. That maybe he tries to run for that first down. Tries to get what he can get. But because he's got no security, if the Cowboys aren't going to stick their neck out for me, why should I stick my neck out for them? I don't know what's in Dak's head. I don't pretend to be in Dak's head. But I wonder if that's a possibility. And that has to be something that Jerry Jones realizes that when he does these things, and these things I, I don't get because you did this with D-Law when you could have signed D-Law the year before for a better rate. You could have signed Dak at the end of the season, made him a legitimate offer before Russell Wilson, and could have probably had him locked up for under 30. But now, it may be 40 million. Or it may be you end up franchise tagging him for a year or two and he ends up going the way like Kirk Cousins to somebody else. 
Jerry, I love the Cowboys. I live the Dallas Cowboys every day of my life. The first thing when I wake up in the morning and the last thing I think about at night, and hell, I woke up in the middle of the night thinking about you guys. Couldn't sleep. These mistakes that we're making are killing us. They just are. Yep. How about them boys? I'm going to go to bed, sleep this off, and I'll see you guys in the morning. We got five weeks left of this regular season. Five weeks to prove that we belong. Five weeks to make this a season. I want to give a special shout out. There's too many of you to name, but Zeppelin fan, that piece is beautiful. Joseph um, Hart Heatherly, you've done so much to help this channel. Um, Jet D. And Georgia being over last night, man, that was great. I just wish you could have went home with the victory. Um, all the people that send me uh, links and emails and texts about things that I might have missed, or Miss Jackie, Emily Ann, and Amos, and, you know, I, I, like I said, I could go on and on and on, and if I did, I'd be here till tomorrow morning. I appreciate each and every one of you guys and ladies for all you guys do to help me do this Joe Blue Sports Report. Trust me, better days are coming. I'll see you guys in the morning. I'm gonna go on my way without you. Whoa, how can I do?